Welcome to the Aero GS channel. I'm your host, Corey Bartolotti. And in today's video, this is going to be some footage that I managed to recover off my old computer before it crashed. So I wasn't able to get all of the footage, so bear with me on this video. But I'm going to be kind of just giving you guys some tips and tricks. So let's go ahead and get started. Remember to call 811 before you start your excavation. That way they can come out there and mark any underground utilities that may be in the area. The drainage issue that we will be fixing today in this backyard is a very low spot in the concrete where water pools and it floods enough to be able to enter the home through the sliding glass door. Now this is a problem that needs to get solved. There is an existing circle drain in this area but we have ran the garden hose in it and we could not find a discharge to it and the line just backs up. So we believe that this line does not actually go anywhere, that it was just buried in the ground and left that way. So what we will be doing is we will be putting six feet of channel drain in this low spot and we will be connecting that channel drain into a sump pump basin and then that pump will lift the water and carry it through the backyard and away from the home now we have to use a sump pump in this situation because we have zero fall in the backyard and it is very flat the whole way through so in order to get this water out of this low spot a pump will be needed now we decided to rent a jackhammer after we made our initial cuts with our demo saw in the concrete. This concrete happened to be a little bit thicker than normal and there was rebar throughout it. So the jackhammer will make it a lot easier to get the concrete out of the channel. When discharging your sump pump line with no fall, use a percolation tee. It allows that line to be able to empty all of its water out after a rain event. Now with this particular one, we decided to use a three inch sanitary tee with a one and a half inch hub on the side of it. That way it can be solvent welded right into our one and a half inch sump pump line. On a small run of channel drains like we are installing in this video, we can get away with having those channel drains ever so slightly downhill to level. Now, if you are installing a very long run of channel drains, you cannot do this because the channel drains will get deeper and deeper and deeper into the concrete. It is going to be a trip hazard. It's going to be a huge divot and it's going to look very unsightly. Now, you have to remember, water is going to travel the path of least resistance. If those channel drains are 100% level on a longer run, that is fine. The water is going to fall into the channel drains. It's going to travel through that channel drain and then it's going to hit your drain pipe. Now the drain pipe on the other hand, that always needs to be downhill to level no matter what. Once that water reaches the end of the channel drains and it finds its way into that drain pipe, you want it to start gushing and flowing through that pipe and making it to the end of the discharge point wherever that may be. Before you start to install your concrete around your channel drain, make sure you tape that channel drain grate off. You do not want concrete going down in there and hardening and creating clogs. This will save you a lot of time in the future from having to clean that out after the concrete hardens. The way we're going to connect our SDR 35 4 inch PVC pipe into our sump pump basin is we're going to use a bell fitting on one end of the pipe. By doing this and drilling a hole with a four and a half inch hole saw bit, this allows for a very snug fit between the bell fitting and the sump pump basin so no dirt and debris can seep through the crack and get into the basin. Now we're going to be using a Zoller M53 sump pump for our system. This is a very good pump and I highly recommend it. And you want to make sure that you use a check valve whenever you're installing a sump pump. The one-way check valve is going to ensure that water does not backflow into your sump pump pit and cause your pump to constantly cycle on and off, on and off. This will burn the pump up and it will decrease the life of it significantly. Also, make sure you drill a weep hole at the bottom of the PVC pipe that connects into your check valve. This weep hole is going to allow the pump not to get airlocked once it stops running. Another tip that will help save your back is try to assemble as many things as you can outside of the pit. It is very uncomfortable to be bent over working down in this pit for long periods of time. So your back will thank you for doing this. 
Now, another thing to remember, once you have your sump pump down in the pit, the last hose clamp will have to be tightened down in the pit on your PVC pipe. Make sure that hose clamp is facing in a direction that you can get either a screwdriver or a drill down in there easily to get that hose clamp tightened up. Once we have the drainage system fully installed, the last bit is gonna be finishing off the concrete and putting everything back together. And we hope you enjoyed this video and you gained some knowledge from watching it. We want the homeowner to be as educated as possible so they understand what's going on and the reasons why we build and design the systems the way we do. And we service the Hillsboro, Pasco, and Pinellas counties of Florida. So if you are in need of a yard drainage system, give us a call. We can come out there and assess the situation and help design a system that fits your needs. And until next time, this is Aero GS signing off. Thank you.